Hey nurse family, nurse Erica here. Today I'm going to demonstrate how to administer an IM injection. Now I do want to say this is a general IM injection video so that if you are administering the COVID vaccine, please go ahead and be sure to um, look up your state's um, course or the policy and um, procedures for your facility, okay? Um, for the COVID vaccine, there are going to be some details that you will not find in this video. But if you're looking for general information on how to administer an IM injection, this video is for you. So stick around. Okay, so the first thing that we're going to do is that I am going to check my medication in my medication administration record, okay? So today I'm taking care of Aiden Fairley and he is um, a patient who just came back or was just admitted for a motor vehicle accident and he is in a lot of pain. So the provider has ordered mor morphine sulfate intramuscular to help with the pain. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and check my order. So the order reads morphine sulfate two milligrams every four hours PRN, okay? And I have already assessed my patient prior to this and my patient is saying that they have a seven out of 10 pain. I also assess my patient's vital signs and all the vital signs are within normal limits paying special attention to the respiratory rate was currently 14 breaths a minute. So I'm happy with that and it's okay to give. So the next thing I'm gonna do is grab my medication and my supplies. For this intramuscular injection, I'm going to need my morphine, which I already um, removed from the Pixis. I'm going to need a syringe. And for this IM injection, I chose a a uh, one milliliter syringe. And the reason why I chose that is because the order is two milligrams and my vial is 10 milligrams per milliliter. So when I did the math, I did what the doctors ordered, which was two milligrams over what I have, which is 10 milligrams times one, it left me with 0 0.2 milliliters. So I chose a one milliliter syringe because that is the most appropriate to administer the 0 0.2 milliliters effectively, or I should say accurately. The next thing is I'm going to use a blunt needle. A blunt needle is a needle that we use in order to withdraw medications from a vial or to obtain a specimen. It's not always necessarily needed. Sometimes you're going to be using the same needle to withdraw the medication and administer the meds. But in this case, I chose to use the blunt needle this is a one and a half inch needle, 19 gauge. So I'll show you that in a second. And just to um, clarify, you will not use a blunt needle to inject the patient. This is only to withdraw medications or obtain a specimen. It's never used to inject into the patient. The next thing I have is a 21 gauge, one and a half inch needle. And I chose this based on the size of my patient's muscle. And this is the most appropriate one for him. Next thing I need is some alcohol, one for the vial and one for the patient and a gauze or a Band-Aid. I also need my hand sanitizer, my gloves. And in this case, but hopefully you won't need this because you'll be working on a real patient. I'm going to have my muscle, which is my muscle here. And I also have a sharps container here. Okay, so right now we'll say that I'm not in the patient's room yet. I'm just in the medication room or wherever it is that, you know, you could actually be outside of the room. Basically, I haven't met the patient yet. So notice I haven't done any of my checks regarding the patient, but I am going to start checking my medication. So again, this is for my patient Aiden Fairley, and I'm looking at the date of birth. This is the patient that I want to um, work with. I am in the medication administration record, and I'm looking, and they are to receive morphine, two milligrams every four hours, PRN, for a pain greater than six, 
and I have here morphine 10 milligrams per milliliter. My medication is not expired and it looks nice and clear, it looks good. Okay, now, you don't necessarily need gloves to withdraw medication. I personally feel more comfortable doing so just because I don't like to get different medications on my skin. Um, but according to the CDC, it's not necessary. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to clean my vial. While that is drying, I'm going to go ahead and grab my syringe. And attach the blunt needle. Now notice I'm not putting my syringe or my needle on the table because I don't know what kind of microbials or in any kind of um, bacteria that is on the table. I don't want that on my syringe. Once this is capped, yes, you can put it down. Okay. So the next thing I'm going to do is if you remember earlier, I said that based on my provider's order and the concentration of morphine that I'm working with, I am going to administer 0.2 milliliters of morphine. So I'm going to withdraw air, 0.2 milliliters of air. And so there's my air. And what I'm going to do is inject that air into my vial. So my vial is facing upright. I'm going to inject the air into the airspace. And now I'm going to invert the vial or turn over the vial. And I want to make sure that I can see my bevel. It's under the fluid line. And I'm going to slowly remove my 0.2 milliliters. Now it's okay to withdraw a little bit more if you're getting air. And then just push past. You could flick the syringe if you need to, but in this case, I don't need to, and I'm going to go ahead and push it up to the 0.2 milliliters. So now I'm going to go ahead and scoop up this cap. I no longer need this blunt needle, or I should show you. I have my 0.2 milliliters of morphine. I no longer need the blunt needle, so I'm going to go ahead and discard it in my sharps container. And I'm going to go ahead and put on my one and a half inch needle. Okay. Now I have my medication. I should also, if I wasn't in the patient's room, if I'm coming from the med room, I should put a nice little label on here that says exactly what it is and who it's for. Okay. So that I don't confuse this. All right, so here's my morphine, two milligrams. Now I'm gonna get ready to go to my patient's room. So I'm gonna clean up my little mess here. I have my medication, I have my alcohol, I have my gauze, and I also need the vial so that I can scan. All right, so let's go over. Okay, so I'm going to knock on the door, perform my hand hygiene. My patient has invited me into the room. Hi, my name is Erica. I'm going to be your nurse. Um, can you tell me your name and date of birth, please? I'm going to just compare that to your ID band and what I have in my MAR. Okay, that seems to match. So, um, as we assessed before, you're having pain, so the provider has ordered morphine sulfate, two milligrams IM intramuscular, okay? So I'm gonna give you an injection to hopefully relieve your pain. Um, I know that you said your pain was a seven out of 10, okay? All right, so let's go ahead and um, give you this. I should let you know that this may make you sleepy or a little tired, so if you feel like you wanna get up out of bed, or you need to use the bathroom or you need any assistance at all, please go ahead and just ring that call bell for me. Okay, I just don't want you to fall. All right, so I scan my patient. I have the correct patient. I'm gonna go ahead and scan my medication. Oh, 
okay, and my medication has come up, I'm gonna go ahead and check that again. So I had morphine sulfate, 10 milligrams per milliliter, and my provider ordered morphine sulfate, two milligrams. So based on my dosage calculation, I want to administer 0.2 milliliters of morphine. So I'm just gonna go ahead and check that again. And everything checks out, okay? So for my patient, I have my alcohol, my gauze, my medication, and just remember, I'm going to be administering it into this injection pad, okay? So I'm gonna put on a set of gloves. When administering an intramuscular injection, it's really important that you consider the size of the muscle and the site of administration, okay? And so if I have a muscle that I feel I need to bring more to the surface, then I might be pinching the skin. And that's usually like a smaller muscle group, a smaller patient, you often will pinch the muscle to just kind of bring it out a little bit more so you can access it. However, in most cases when we're going to be administering an intramuscular injection, you're going to be holding the skin taut, which means nice and tight to go ahead and make sure that you're administering that needle or injecting that needle all the way into the muscle, okay? Considering the size of the needle, we wanna make sure that we reach that muscle, but also we don't wanna go past the muscle and hit the bone. So you're always thinking about the size of the muscle and your patient, okay? All right, so what I'm gonna go ahead and do now is clean my site. in a circular motion and I'm going to allow it to air dry and while it air dries I'm just going to go ahead and get my gauze ready or a band-aid if that's what I'm using all right so now I have my um, syringe in hand and notice that I'm holding the syringe like a dart okay I don't want to hold my syringe and plunger this way because as I'm injecting this medication I might accidentally start to um, push the plunger down and now give maybe some of the medication into the tissue, into the subcutaneous tissue. And I don't wanna do that. I wanna make sure that I go right into the muscle so that I'm reaching the right rate of absorption, okay? So what I'm gonna do is hold my syringe like a dart. I'm going to remove my cap. I'm going to decide if I'm going to either use the Z-Track method to displace the skin one inch and that is done in cases where you feel that this medication is going to be irritating to the surrounding tissue. You're going to displace the tissue by just pushing it to the side one inch and injecting the needle directly into the muscle. You're gonna hold that until you remove the needle and then you're going to let go of the skin, okay? In this case, I'm just going to hold the skin taut because I have determined that that's the most appropriate way of administering this medication to the patient. I'm holding my syringe in a dart. I'm holding my skin taut using my index and thumb. And I wanna go into a 90 degree angle. I don't wanna go 45, I don't wanna go 85, I wanna go nice and straight 90. So here I go, I'm gonna dart this needle in, okay? I'm going to hold my syringe in place and then I'm gonna move my thumb up to the plunger and inject this medication at 10 seconds per milliliter. And if you remember, this is only 0.2 milliliters, so very fast. And then I should wait about 10 seconds to make sure all the medication is out of the needle and into the muscle. I'm going to remove my fingers because I don't wanna accidentally stick myself. I'm going to withdraw the needle at the same um, at the same 90 degrees and I'm going to engage my safety and discard my needle and syringe into the sharps. I'm gonna grab my gauze and just press firm pressure along the muscle. Okay, so now that I've discarded my syringe and needle, I've placed pressure on my patient's muscle. I'm going to assess to see if my patient tolerated the procedure well and they seem to have tolerated it well. I'm gonna go ahead and remove my gloves Discard them. I'm going to perform my hand hygiene. Okay. 
and I'm going to continue to document by updating my chart. I'm going to lower the bed, put the side rails up, uh, give my patient the call bell. I've already educated them on um, the use of the call bell if they need any assistance. And now I'll come back to assess this patient and evaluate their pain as appropriate, okay? So that is how to administer an IM injection. I hope you found this video helpful. If you have any questions or comments, be sure to leave them down in the comment box, okay? Um, also remember that I have videos on how to choose the appropriate needle and syringe and how to administer a sub-Q injection. All right, there you go. Kick. Hey, 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 hey.